Most rappers want to be gangster. I repeat, most rappers want to live the lifestyle of a gangster. F, my crew and I was talented enough to be professional ball players, actors, singers. Back in the days, trust and believe, we definitely would have chosen the legit route. Who in the hell in a rightful state of mind would choose to be a temporary gangster who life is about to be cut short within a New York minute from a violent and bloody death or being married to a jail cell for the remainder of one life. Boys and girls, man and woman, please wake up and realize it's extremely hard just being ourselves, meaning it is twice as hard pretending to be someone else. Mr. Antonio Harding, aka Big Daddy Kane, learned that very valuable lesson the hard way, and it could have cost him his life. It was the last week of June, 1988. Heat wave, war on drug, and black on black crime at its highest form. Drug dealer eating lovely, and the stick of kids was robbing any and everyone and everything that didn't have armed security. In those times, myself included, a lot of hustlers was wearing one to two years of the average working man salary on a neck and wrist. This particular day, Kane was sitting in his car without a care in the world. He was Big Daddy Kane, bigger than life, ain't no half-stepping, thinking he could not be had. Obviously, he was not thinking. This was New York City. Crime weight was at an all-time high, and the Luca Brasi of my Money and Murder organization, G, and his buddy, the late I.N. from Notion Avenue, rest in peace, was visiting friends. They spotted Big Daddy Kane sitting in a brand new foreign car near LG, Lafayette Garden Houses in Brooklyn, home to the little Kim ex-boyfriend Damon Royal Hardy, no relationship to Kane. They ease up to him as he sat there and kindly relieve him of all his jewelry on a smooth tip. As they kindly walked away, leaving him in a state of sharp, lucky to be alive, G was making plenty of money back then. They got Kane to let him know that he was not untouchable. Everyone can be touched, even rappers who want to be gangster or wear a neck full of jewelry as F they was gangsters. Over the years, I used to hear things online, I read thread that Big Daddy King was under my protection. If that was true, my man G would have never bit the hand that feed him and robbed Big Daddy King if he was under my protection. What people gotta understand is, just because you from New York, or you from Brooklyn, or the five boroughs, everybody didn't know everybody. So don't assume even with the shit with the A team, like everybody wanted to be down with the A team. Guess what? Everybody was not down with the A team. The A team was a whole totally different group. And to me, as I say beforehand, a lot of guys we were real close with, we grew up with, I was never the leader of the A team under any circumstance. And Big Daddy King, or none of those cartoon characters was ever under my protection. If they was, nothing would have happened to them. My name is Brian Glaze Gibbs. Gibbs. I was once the problem causing havoc on my community and people. Having a small army following behind me all for the wrong reason. Today, I'm seeking to share my story of me and some of the major figures from the 80s and the 90s, illustrating the good, the bad, and the ugly outcome of our lifestyle. Straight from the Street, Volume 1, the brand new audiobook and ebook of True Life Event of Myself. Straight from the Street, Volume 1. My name is Brian Glaze Gibbs. One day, as Tut and I was walking past the Kingdom Hall, Jehovah Witness, on Fountain Avenue, and across the street from Cypress, where Tut and his whole family attended, Tut say, let's stick up the Kingdom Hall. We can get paid. 
43 Farragut Houses, Murder Avenue, Junior, Obi Square Mall, Puerto Rican Supreme, Rap, Jamel, Killer Ben, Nas, and D. Wes. The whole Brooklyn was like Beirut back then. Any and everything go. I only had one problem with Kendu. When I came home after being acquitted in June of 1987, he was having a birthday party for his daughter in Plaza Center. And he had a small army, some of his friends from Queens, the Bronx, and Brooklyn. They was all strapped with guns and supposed to be on point for security. He lied and told these guys that this crazy brother by the name of Glaze had just came home and that I was coming up the plaza with a whole army to take over his drug operation. One evening, it was a big basketball game going on and everyone from Lou Hobb to Miss Yo, Tut, Alpo, Black Just, the who's who of the game, when a shootout erupted. I made sure that my Brooklyn folks got out of harm way and back into their car safe and sound. During that period, Lou, Demisio, and a lot of guys from Brooklyn discover a gold mine in DC and Baltimore, and they start setting up shop and was getting paid in full. What most people don't know, and that is Pappy is not Jamaican. Pappy is more American than baseball, apple pie, and Chevrolet. He just practiced the Rastafarian religion. I can remember when Calvin McCloud, AKA Allah Justice and I was still close friend. He had gotten to a beef with some guys from the Fort Green Farragut section at Orby Square Mall. Just so happened, I was strapped and I pull out my 45 automatic and the drama ended that day. I was there for three to five hours playing dice and bullshitting around. I got to the point I was ready to go. I didn't know it at the time. From the time we was at the pawn shop, Fort Green and Albany houses, 50 contacted Webb telling him, Glaze is with me and he is not wearing a bulletproof vest nor carrying a gun. We can get him. This is what we're gonna do. Let's take over the whole area, the whole block. He was somebody to be feared, somebody to be reckoned with, and maybe it was better to back down than to confront him. And I mean, he really had a reputation of cats fearing him at that time. They were smart enough to see the utility and value of having someone as dangerous as Brian on their side. The initial members of the round table was Cat, Pappy, Preem, and Prince. And then right now where's me and Bug Out. But we knew that he was involved with these guys in Queens. They were moving kilos of cocaine. They were selling crack by the barrel load and in effect had become crack pioneers. I'm about to turn myself in for, you know, a murder and attempt murder. 